Hello, everyone. Um, so, bit of a bit of an introduction uh, to well, about Eshaw. If anyone hasn't heard of us, uh, we are a personal lines insurance company, um, more focused on motor. Uh, we're currently going through a sort of a big digital transformation, uh, moving from a an old and dusty platform to to a sparkly new one. Just a little bit about me, just so you know, I work in the fraud area uh, within Eshaw. Um, so the way that I'll talk through obviously how we how we use Tiger, but we use it slightly differently to sort of how how we uh, how we first when we first got it. Um, now I need to I need to mention stuff on this slide because uh, I'm always told if I'm talking to other people I need to make sure we mention this. Part of our digital transformation, a part of our the, the the big project we're going through at the moment is it's part of our overall mission statement to sort of fix insurance for good. Um, and it's something that is sort of driving all the things that we're we're doing currently. Um, so this sort of customer centric view that we've got um, as, as we're developing, but it's also trying to sort of help the insurance industry uh, sort of get better for, for everyone. So we're working closely with suppliers, making sure they do the right things, uh, as well as ensuring personally, from my point of view, the right fraud controls in place, uh, just to make sure that we can protect our good customers while detecting those customers that are, are, are less good. Tiger and eShore. So Tiger was originally brought in as a an IT system and telephony system. Um, it was maintained maintained by our IT department and it was to monitor call volumes uh, and sort of any associated costs with calls. Um, however, uh, myself and one of my team uh, a few years ago uh, went to a, a Tiger user group actually uh, and it was during one of the breakout sessions that we had um, but sort of in the, in the breakout sessions between presentations, uh, we got talking to one of the sort of Tiger, the techie guys uh, from Tiger and they well, they essentially they opened our eyes to what Tiger could do for us. So we sort of went along thinking it could do one thing, but after that session, we it was it sort of uh, blew our minds on what we could use it. So we were shown some of the analytical tools uh, that sort of sit within Tiger uh, and the rules functionality as well, the alerting functionality. And to be quite honest, we saw it as a brilliant opportunity to actually help us detect fraud. Um, so at the time we had, so back when we started using Tiger, we had some really good online controls, but our telephony, the telephony journey that we had, it had gaps, basically. It was always, it was really hard to pick up anything in a timely manner. Uh, you know, not even say the next day, it was, it was really hard to try and find anything. Um, running analysis was nigh and impossible. We, we couldn't do it with our core system. Um, but, and the problem we had was, uh, either at policy or claim stage, we had some really big. We we knew that we were, you know, uh, vulnerable on the on the telephony channel. So on the policy side of things, we had ghost brokers. Um, so ghost brokers uh, for non-insurance people uh, are basically individuals that set up um, insurance policies illegally on behalf of other people, or sometimes with completely fictitious details. Um, but we've also on the on the claim side of things, we we have there's issues with around um, sort of what they call claims farming or social engineering as well, where we get people calling in to try and elicit information from us uh, to then try and progress a claim sort of uh, an exaggerate claim or, or to you know report a, a fraudulent claim. So all of that, we knew it was going on, but actually trying to put trying to pin it down, trying to figure out how we could use it that's that's where we really struggled we started using tiger initially for some analysis and then after that analysis we moved on to rules so uh, we're we're quite fortunate that we're members of the insurance fraud bureau uh which from insurer point of view is they're a central hub that allows us to share fraud intelligence uh, either suspected or confirmed fraud so one of the one of the pieces of information that comes out is they share details between about individuals or individuals or companies that are behind fraud rings or organized fraud. So we're being made aware of phone numbers where other companies were being, other insurance companies were being um, sort of targeted. Um, and these phone numbers, as, as previously mentioned, they link to ghost brokers, claims farmers, or sort of social engineers. Um, so one of the things is we were getting these numbers, but we couldn't do anything with them. With Tiger, what we're able to do is we ran analysis to try and find out actually have we seen these have we seen these before and then we started to set 
rules live, which then gave us the alerts. We were happy. We were sort of happy with the results that we were getting through, and with the res with the rules that we then set up, uh, they were what it allowed us to do is actually identify the calls as they were happening. Now, this was something that was it was sort of took us. Uh, light years ahead of where we were um, initially, um, but the the alerting functionality and getting those trigger alerts, uh, the email alerts that were then coming through to investigators within our fraud team, but also within my intelligence team as well, um, that we could then identify these cases as as soon as they were happening, which was quite exciting. One of the things we also did at the time is we started to use Tiger Prism um, to identify potential fraud. So while we had this information from other companies, either other insurers or the, as I say, the Insurance Fraud Bureau, or where our, our own in-house investigators identified information, we that was our known fraud. But what we were able to use um, Tiger Prism for was actually to start digging and to find the unknowns. Um, so finding those potential undetected fraud, which again was a, was a, a brilliant sort of step forward. The big question really is, what kind of results have we had? So uh, obviously everyone likes to measure results. Uh, that's that's why we do why we do what we do. So when we started using Tiger for um, sort of anti fraud purposes, so over and above why why we initially got it in, within the first three month period, we actually found over fifty phone calls that were linked to a, a, a group of um, com group of individuals that were um, farming claims. Or to involve a claims farming activity where they're trying to listen that information and actually those 50 claims had savings of over eight hundred thousand um, pounds which we were able to identify through tiger we were finding examples of the same individuals calling in trying to pull out that information from us because of the tiger alerts that we had and the rules that we had in place actually the the people that were calling in they weren't getting that information from us which is brilliant and we actually we actually ended up using it to um, find an internal fraud case as well, because what we found is um, certain ha a particular handler kept having a lot of unusually high contact with a particular uh, external company. But this was an unusual thing; it shouldn't didn't really fit in their day job. So we were actually able to pull that out, and then it actually helped our internal fraud investigation. I'm going to use the word exciting because it is quite exciting because fraud's exciting. We actually had a scenario where um, a call alert came through and it went to the, to the investigator and they were actually able to cancel the policy within 25 minutes of that phone call being um, initiated. Now that is massive because at the time everything we had was um, sort of overnight batch. So any kind of analysis or any kind of matching was always the day after the event. Um, whereas this was, you know, less than half an hour after the call came in and we were able to get rid of that get rid of that customer it was a known bad customer and sort of box it off which was which was brilliant we've got currently we've got currently around 600 rules um that we use on a on a daily basis um and then since the start of last year uh we've had around 800 um phone calls that have been identified as being suspicious of the the phone numbers that we've added it's quite interesting because around about a quarter of them are linked to um, internal fraud ring investigations. So sort of fraud ring investigations that have been driven by um, our investigators and around 300 are linked to industry investigations. And then others are um, the opportunistic fraudsters, so the people that try it on, uh, but they're not necessarily particularly organized about it. And in terms of in terms of savings, it's it it's helped it's helped feed into um the identification of a lot of fraud rings because some of the I'll, i've got a couple of case studies i'm just going to talk through in a minute but one of the one of the things that often happens is where you've got a particularly sophisticated fraudster what they don't do is they're they're quite good sorry what they don't do is they try not to share information between the various policies they're setting up so actually to detect it it's really hard because those policies are unrelated you you never normally match them but with the tiger alerts that we've got and trying to find those bad numbers it's actually triggering uh triggering these alerts and allowing us to find uh find things and we've we've been able to use the output from tiger uh when we refer things to the ifb so the the whole sort of uh our relationship with the IFB is they share intelligence with us, we share intelligence and evidence back with them. And actually the tiger, the bits we can get from tiger has really fed into that over the last few years. So I'll quickly go on to uh, case case study one. This particular one is uh, based around a policy fraud ring. This group 
started uh, after there were some investigations into a particular policy that was linked to previous fraud. So we found that we found this policy and we went, yep, they linked to previous fraud. We then delved into Tiger and we found an additional five policies straight away um, through using the sort of Tiger analysis tool. And the majority of those ones, it's a really good example of ones that none of those policies matched. There was no matching details other than this individual calling in from the same same phone number. We created the rule uh, around this particular hot hot telephone number. Uh, and at the time it was running, the rule was running every five minutes. So the investigators and the intel team were getting those alerts to near real time, not quite real time, but near real time. They're coming through straight away. The rule then identified a further 10 policies. So we sort of brought that up to 15 um, in a relatively short space of time. And we wouldn't have been able to de detect those policies uh, had we not got the um, this set up. This is the, so on the left-hand side is sort of the alerts that, that, sorry, on the left-hand side is the sort of exposure review that we're doing. And on the right-hand side, that sort of shows the email alert that we're getting through. And it's really good for investigators because it goes, boom, this is the phone call. Here's the time it happened. And this is the rule that's fired. Because then they know, ah, oh, that's linked to my a particular operation or a particular thing they're looking into. So it's, uh, it's it was really, really useful. Um, now, this one uh, is actually a claims and policy fraud ring. Uh, they don't happen all the time. A lot of the time they tend to cluster around one or the other. But this was uh, this was a, a policy and claim one. It was uh, we'd, we'd this one was triggered because we'd uh, we'd received some intelligence uh, about a cross industry investigation and it centered around uh, claims being notified from a common phone number um, and the claims that were being notified were you know, confirmed as fraudulent claims. Now, initial searches um, linked to around five previously identified fraudulent policies. So these policies have been investigated, they've been flagged as fraud, but actually we hadn't got that link on the phone number until we were searching it because of the claims. Um, and when the those phone calls got listened back to, it was the same individual setting up all these phone calls, but pretending to be different people on, on each one. Again, we created a rule uh, within uh, Prism to get those alerts if if any any new policy any new policies were set up or any claims got reported. When when it started to come through, um, we started to we we got a few claims that came through that hadn't been identified previously, um, and it was this is the the way that it all linked together is it was a smaller cluster, but we had those three claims and the savings were well just north of 30,000, which is pretty big, to be honest, for, for the claims that we uh, that we investigate. Having that combined between all of them was uh, was a good amount. You'll be pleased to hear the last uh, case study. So this one is the it's the bigger it's one of the bigger groups that we've had. Um, and I should say, actually, the case studies that are going through here, we actually we did win um, insurance award where we did sort of a, a combined submission with uh, with the guys from Tiger. Um, so this is quite proud because this is all sort of um you know award award winning stuff which is fantastic this one's interesting because it's all centered around social engineering so what we'd the the scenario here that we had is the investigators had noticed a, a spike in social engineering calls that actually were from various individuals but they were all saying they were from this one particular firm um and what was happening is the firm was calling into eshore trying to get as much claim information as possible and then they were actually reaching out to our policyholders depending on what information they could elicit and then they told our policyholders oh we're from a company that is representing eshore uh, please sign this and we'll deal with your claim so that's what they were doing and then essentially what they were doing is they were falsifying those documents that said they're representing policyholder or the claimant could be represented by this firm so the initial calls were and numbers were all identified and the review, we carried out a review and we actually found quite a number of claims that hadn't been picked up um, based on based on the search we could do on Tiger. The graphic just here on the right, it's the kind of inf it's the kind of information that they were trying to get. So someone's calling in trying to ask for information and they get a little bit maybe from different handlers uh, to then put all the piece together. So once the once we'd set the tiger rule live, um, the alerts carried on coming through. Um, and as I say, we wouldn't have been able to do it any other way. Um, the contact was made with our policyholders um, who'd coerced them to, to sign this agreement. Um, and we let them know that actually, no, they're not part of eShore. We've got nothing to do with us. Please sort of stop, stop 
dealing with them and most of the customers did more and more claims got identified um, and actually this is where it, it then took a twist because the kind of claims that were cropping up sometimes they involved third parties sometimes they were um, single vehicle accidents or theft claims where there was no third party involved and actually what happened is it was identified that this ha everything pointed towards this being linked to an insider fraud so with obviously that makes it way more interesting because it's uh, in, internal fraud um, but what we what we then found out is actually it was one of our suppliers uh, had a, a data leak problem and we were able to raise it with them and actually we then subsequently worked with the insurance fraud bureau and with other insurance companies who all spoke to this one supplier going we think you've got a problem um, fortunately they were very quick to act um, and they they identified a group of individuals within their firm that was selling on claims data, not just from eShore, but from other companies as well. Um, and, the, and the best bit is the, those individuals um, actually got arrested and they're currently pending. Um, their, their trial is still pending, um, but they got arrested for what they did, which is which is fantastic. Um, so this particular group, I mean, it was it was it was a pretty big, big one for us. So there were 49 different phone numbers linked to this uh, linked to this case and we had 62 claims got identified and the savings there so we had it was over over half a million saving on on just this group um because of the and and a lot of it is driven because of the tiger alerts that we set up that's it for me um it's uh, i think the thing i love about this is that we use tiger for a fraud thing even though it's not necessarily what it was uh, there for mm -hmm.